My name is Nathan, and I came back after living in heaven for exactly 300 years. I'm sure a lot of people will be curious as to how it felt, so let me start from how I got there. I tried to be a good person, but my horrible temper always got in the way. It was to the point where I no longer had friends. My family stopped talking to me, including my own mother, father, and two sisters. I was only 21 years old, but I was truly alone. I tried to blame everyone around me, but I knew deep down that it was my own fault. Anyway, enough of my sob story. Let me tell you how I died. I got off of my shift at the local grocery store and was walking back home. On the way home, a man walked up to me and asked, Hey man, could you spare some cash? I lost my job a couple of days ago, and I need to get some type of food for my kids. He pointed at a hungry boy and girl sitting behind him, but I scoffed and said, Not that hard to get a job. Why did you even procreate when you're goddamn trash? I gave him a quick chuckle and walked past him, when I felt pain erupt from my lower back. The next couple of seconds were filled with a knife plunging into my chest. I don't know when I blacked out, but the next thing I remember was opening my eyes and seeing a woman sitting close to my head and saying, Stay calm, we're almost there, stay with. I blacked out again, and before I knew it, I was met with a sense of absolute peace. Before I opened my eyes, I knew I was floating. When I opened my eyes, I saw myself floating through a fog of memories. Through the fog, I could see myself yelling and cussing out my parents a year before storming out of their house. That was the last time I saw them. The next thing I saw was the time I was pulled over by the cops with my best friend since we were six, Brad. He was there for me whenever I needed someone the most, but I took advantage of that. When the cop pulled us over, I took out the seven grams of coke out of my pocket and threw it on the car seat behind me. Brad looked at me with pleading eyes while the cops cuffed him, but I acted oblivious to everything. I closed my eyes again and did not open them until I felt solid ground under my feet. In a deep sigh, I opened my eyes and saw around 20 to 30 people standing in front of me. I looked down and saw that we were standing on a clear glass of some sort. When I looked back up, I saw that I was next in line. I rushed up to a man that stood in front of the largest gate I had ever seen in my life. The gate was simple, but it looked to be made of solid gold. After oogling at the gate for a couple of seconds, I looked down at the man in front of me. He was maybe a little over four feet tall, poorly maintained facial hair that covered half of his face, and eyes filled with sadness and disappointment. I opened my mouth to ask him who he was, but before I could get a sound out, he spoke in a raspy voice. Nathan Cliff enter through the gates. Although I was confused, I rushed through the gates and looked around. A road paved with gold, bodies made of solid light walking around everywhere, and other people walking around with dreamy expressions on their faces. Besides the people that walked around me, everything around me was a mixture of absolutely pure light. Something far brighter and crisper than anything I have ever seen. The only thing that stuck out like a sore thumb was a man dressed in all red with a piece of paper. Written on the piece of paper was the date. Somehow, whenever the man flipped the paper over, it gave the date of the next day, and an endless swarm of people surrounded the man. The first fifty years passed by quickly. I met a lot of other people and talked about our lives, but I quickly became bored. 
You can only talk to so many people before their lives start sounding the same. We never grew hungry, tired or thirsty, but it never ended my cravings. I wanted to get a good night's rest. I wanted to eat just one carrot to savor all of the taste. I wanted to quench our thirst with a cool glass of water. But all we had was each other, and those damn angels had never said a word to anyone. For the next 110 years, I reflected back on my life. It may seem like a long time to think about 21 years of life, but you can learn a lot more about your life just by revisiting the same memory thousands of times. You learn to see things in more than just your perspective, in ways much more than the words said. It took me 160 years to finally snap. I don't know what came over me, but I wanted to leave this place. I wanted to go to hell. Anything would be better than here. This is when everything around me started to fall apart. It started with me walking up to the bodies of light we called the angels. I tried talking to them, but they never responded back to a word I said. When I truly became desperate, I tried to protect them in any way possible, but anything I was struggling with would just go through them. With every attempt, they just looked at them and said the same thing. Keep searching, keep walking, for you will find the answer. Eighty years had gone by since then, and all I had done was failed attempts of attacking other angels, as well as asking everyone else if they knew what the answer was. Everything was a failure. I started to give up hope, but I started on the longest journey of my life. I turned around and started running as fast as I could. I would still see the man flip the sign over and over, telling us what the next day was. It was annoying at times, but it was really the only thing that kept me from going insane. 55 years go by. It is now the 295th year in heaven and I started to see the gate I walked through three lifetimes ago. Three years of constantly running, and I don't feel like I'm any closer. But the scenery around me changes. I am now surrounded by body parts and blood lying all around where I run. I came across a couple of heads, and whenever I see each one, I stop running and ask them what happened. Each of them said the same exact thing. Don't look for the truth. The truth won't help you. Enjoy the punishment. It only gets worse from here. I started to get scared. Not just scared for my life. This was far more. I was scared for my soul. The part that will never die. The part that will suffer for all eternity. No matter how bad we were cut up, sliced open, or just cut into dozens of pieces by the people around me now, I would not be able to leave. This is a punishment that will never end. After three years of running and hearing the same thing over and over again, I started to second guess myself, but I needed to know. It was beyond curiosity. I was trying to get out of the eternal suffering I ended up in. Two years later, from the start of my 300th year, I approached the gates. I walked up to the man that stood in front of the gate and fell to my knees, a defeated man. He looked at me with the same eyes that were filled with disappointment and sadness before saying, Nathan Cliff. Poor Nathan Cliff. I begged him to let me out, to let me leave, but he simply said back, Learn the truth, and you may leave. In between heavy breaths of panic, 
I replied back. It told me you would tell me the truth, or that I would find the truth in my way here. He simply said back, You know the truth. I said the first thing in my mind. Is this hell? He chuckled and said, No, you are in heaven. Or what makes you think heaven is for the good? You left the paradise created by God, the paradise ruined by us. We can blame the devil all we want, but we are the ones that continue to do wrong. Do you think Lucifer continues to spread his lies to the people when the lies are spread for him? I wanted to argue with him, but deep down I knew that was the truth. Humans are truly what ruined the world God made for us. Lucifer may have tempted us, but we are the ones that truly ruined it. I woke back up and saw the woman that was talking to me before I lived through the scariest experience of my life. She calmly said, Don't worry, you're back now. Don't go on us, we're almost there. I knew she was mostly saying it for herself, but I gave her my best attempt of a nod. She put the defibrillator back down and we were silent for the rest of the ride. I'm in the hospital now. I learned that I was dead for 45 seconds. 45 seconds that created exactly 300 years for me. I'm on my phone now. The doctors are done treating me. Pain is still erupting all over my body. That man does it feel good. I have a tray of food in front of me. Carrot sticks that I never like, but it is bursting with flavor for me. Water that is quenching my parched throat. And after I post this experience to you guys, I am going to enjoy a good night's rest. <laughs>